In today's video, I'm going to beat 100% on Platinum Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. With Dead Rising being one of my favourite series ever, you can imagine my excitement with the announcement of a remaster. And boy, it didn't disappoint. To achieve this, I'll need to take down over 53,000 zombies, save 50 survivors in one playthrough, defeat some insane people roaming around the mall, try to uncover the mystery of the zombie outbreak by completing every case file, survive for 7 days in infinite mode, and take hundreds of photos for that sweet PP bonus. For now, speaking of photos, it begins with me, Frank West, getting a tip on some weird things going down in a small town called Willamette. So, I hire a pilot to fly me in, and on the way, I see the army. It seems the scoop might have been legit. Taking control of Frank, I take some pictures as I fly through the town. It's pretty obvious something strange is going on. After taking my first picture, I get my first of 51 trophies. I continue taking pictures. This guy, fighting for his life on a car, doesn't end well for him. A gas station exploding, and a woman fighting off the undead on a rooftop. That also doesn't go very well. Moments later, in the distance, I see a mall and decide that is the best place to start this investigation. I have three days, that's 72 hours, before my pilot will return and pick me up, or at least, hopefully. If I'm not back on the roof though by 12, I'll be spending the rest of my life stuck here. On the roof, I jump out of the chopper like an absolute badass, landing like a champ, and then I meet this guy on the roof. His name is Carlito. He doesn't say much, so I head inside. So time, it's a big factor in this game. Everything happens at certain times, so my trusty watch is a lifesaver. Once inside, I get welcome to hell and introduced to how I save the game. I can save at this bed, in the security room and also any restroom scattered around the mall. I take pictures of my first PP sticker. I'll need 100 of these. And I also level up for the first time. To level up, I'll need PP. That's prestige points. I need to hit the max level of 50, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Each time I level up, I'll get something new. Maybe more health, some extra damage, inventory space, and of course, the most important, running speed. We also get some new abilities along the way. Oh, and uh, lastly, you get throw distance, but nobody cares about that one. Anyway, moving on, I find myself in the main entrance, where I see a whole bunch of survivors barricading the front gate. One of which is a mysterious looking woman. I get a nice up close look that they are indeed, as I feared, zombies. I get myself into position and I take a picture of the gate because, well, I need evidence after all. Plus, I want that beautiful PP. I even get myself another trophy for taking a group photo. That photo also leveled me up, giving me two new moves. A jump kick and a dodge, which we'll be using both of those a hell of a lot. I continue taking pictures of the survivors scattered around the entrance for some easy PP and get another easy trophy called Portraitor for photographing 10 survivors. I then head towards the back of the entrance and see a grumpy old man who tried to poke my bloody eyes out with his walking stick. And while that's all happening, an old lady somehow overpowers the dudes at the front gate, gets through, opens the shutters and lets all the bloody zombies in. Why would you do that? <laughs> As you might imagine, things take a turn for the worse, the zombies all pile in and every survivor I just photographed is, uh, yeah, about to die. Lovely. I hear a guy from above who shouts, head towards the stairs. I smack a zombie in the face with a TV and then head up the stairs into the security room. Once inside, I realize no one else is coming from the entrance because none of them made it. And my main man Otis welds the door shut. Ain't no zombies getting through there. I meet Brad. He's the guy who told me to basically move my ass and Jesse. Brad heads back out into the mall, through the vents. Apparently, zombies don't use vents, so it's safe for getting in and out of the mall. I speak with Otis before going out and he hands me a map of the mall and a walkie-talkie. What a legend. He watches the cameras so he can fill me in on the walkie-talkie of any survivor locations. Nice. 
and anything odd that might be going on in the mall. Beautiful. I'll quickly check my stats and find a page with all of the survivors. I'll need to completely fill this for a trophy later. I also find a menu for challenges, which are basically the trophies, but it gives us some in-game trackers, so we kind of know where we are with them. So, again, I'll need to complete all of these for the Platinum. But that isn't even close, so I head through the vents, which leads to the roof. Here, I find my first two survivors. An old couple, Jeff and Natalie. Even though they're both on the roof, they somehow lost each other. Uh, so I got them both, I had a little chit chat with them. They reunited, and that gave me a photo opportunity, which gave me some massive PP. So anytime that thing pops up, I'll be taking advantage of it. I then take them both back to the security room. This is pretty much my safe place and where I'll bring any of the survivors I find. With the couple safe, I head back out and end up in a warehouse where I climb up here and then fall off like an idiot. So I did unlock the freefall trophy. So I'll take the win. Moments later, Jessie sneaks up on me and I almost took a bloody head off. She was on her way to find Brad. I convince her to head back in and I'll go get Brad. She reluctantly hands over a gun and after I tell her, You know how to use this? Kinda. I've covered wars, you know. We set off. Through the next door, I find myself in the amazing looking Paradise Plaza. I'll be running through this location a lot. I hear someone running around though. Hey, it's Ken. He's also a photographer and tells me about four different genres of photos I can get while taking pictures. There's brutality, drama, outtake and horror. Ken asks me to snap a few pictures of him while he does his stupid poses and then he shows me his. He tells me to take an outtake picture and meet him here tomorrow. So I agree. Now I've played the original so many times that I know the locations of many of the good items. So I head up to the second floor into a place called Roastmasters because it has an unlimited supply of orange juice. One of the best healing items in the entire game. I then jump over this and grab myself a cheeky katana. I then decided to explore a little bit, taking in the beautiful scenery, the graphics and mess around. While doing it, I found a bowling ball and got myself to strike on some zombies. But that's enough messing around for now. I promised Jesse I would go and meet up with Brad at the food court. On the way, I get a radio from Otis about two survivors who had barricaded themselves in somewhere. Now, you may have noticed something on the left side of the screen. These are the scoops, and anything Otis has radioed me in about will show up here. That blue bar you see, yeah, that slowly goes down. That's because time is always passing. And if I'm not quick enough, I'll completely miss the scoop. That even includes case files, which are this game's main store missions. So, for example, if I don't complete the backup for Brad in time, I won't uncover the truth behind the zombie outbreak. So, the main story would be over, but I could obviously still explore the mall and try and get back to the roof in three days. We'll leave, but again, without the truth. Which is, you know, why we came here. So, I know that's a lot of information, but hopefully I kind of explained it well enough that you get the basics. So now, let's go and meet with Brad at the food court. Once I arrive, I find him in a battle with a guy I met when I first arrived on the roof. Brad gives me a pistol and tells me to take him out. I haven't really shot at a dude before, but you know, sure, I run up there and I blast away. Now I have. After defeating him, he leaves like he's freaking Batman or something. I have a little chat with Brad and I tell him I'm covering this story and we should probably work together. He isn't really cooperating at first, but I show him a picture of the old geezer from the beginning. Remember the dude that tried to poke my eyes out? Well, turns out Brad and Jesse have actually been sent here to find him. So we come to a deal. If Brad leaves me alone and lets me uncover the story, I will tell him where the old guy is. Seems like a good deal to me. And Brad agrees. As we're making our way to the entrance plaza, you know, where we last saw the old guy, those two that Otis called about earlier, well, I found them here and saved them. I continued on and found an SMG in a fountain. Cheeky. And then when we did get to the entrance, the old guy was there. Happy days. 
but he refused to leave the shop. So, for now, he's staying put. Brad heads back to the security room, and I go and save a woman whose baby has been eaten by zombies. And then outside in the park, I almost get run over by three prisoners in a jeep with a gun on the back. They see a couple and take out the guy, but the girl runs off. If I'm quick enough, I can save the girl. These three are pretty hard to be honest this early on in the game when you're such a low level and they'll kill me really easily. They also just keep roaming around this park if I don't kill them so it's probably best to take them out. So I took out my katana and went to town on them doing my best to avoid being run over by using the dodge ability we unlocked earlier and also tried not to get shot by the muppet on the gun. After a few failed attempts I just took out my SMG, defeated the gunner and then sliced through the other two with my katana. I then stole the vehicle for the carjacker trophy. All that done, I saved the girl and took them all back to the security room. And on the way, I got introduced to the queen bee. If I kill a zombie with a bee on its back, you can tell which one that is because it's doing some weird animation thing, and then grab the bee and smash it near a horde of zombies, it'll pop all of the melons in one go. Now finally back at the security room, I waited for all of this to blow over. No, I'm, I'm just messing. We have a little chat. Brad and Jesse are basically undercover, and they've lost contact with the outside world. I tell them in three days that there's a helicopter coming to pick me up. Brad tells me we should try and get the old geezer again tomorrow, and until then, he's going to go and get some supplies. Now that I have a moment, I check out my DLC costumes and change into Frank from the original and then had some time to waste while waiting for the next case. So I headed back into Paradise Plaza and put some masks on zombies and took an outtake picture, which I needed for Kent. While doing it, I unlocked Costume Party, placing 10 novelty masks on zombies. Next, I went into Wonderland's Plaza, where I would find my first psychopath, Adam the Clown. He's uh, absolutely bonkers. He attacks using two mini chainsaws, yes, mini chainsaws, jumps and flips around like he's freaking weightless or something, which is clearly not, and sends explosive balloons flying towards me. Oh yeah, he also breathes fire. Like, bro, what? I tried to keep my distance while he did his weird little attacks, and then I'd run in, hit him with my katana, and repeat, heal him when I needed to. I also popped the balloon, which would stun him. After beating him in self-defense, that was our first proper psychopath down. Now, after beating a psycho, you can usually use their weapon. And in this case, it's the mini chainsaw. This is by far one of the best weapons in the game. And with the right books, I'll go over books and how useful they are soon. You can easily blast through the whole game with the chainsaw. I wanted to use different weapons though, so I just didn't use this strategy. All that said, I stopped the ride because poor Greg had been going around and around in circles for what I can only imagine is hours. And he showed me a ridiculously useful shortcut that I will be using all of the time that takes me from where I am right now, Wonderland Plaza, which is on the left side of the map, all the way over to the right side of the map, which is Paradise Plaza. That's the main area we'll be going through constantly. This also means we don't have to run through the outside area where the prisoners are. And you might be wondering, well, you killed the prisoners, so what does it matter? Well, for whatever reason, the prisoners respawn every single day. So if I can avoid going through that area with survivors, happy days. But before I followed Greg to the shortcut, I saved two Japanese dudes, but not before grabbing a book to help me understand what the hell they were actually saying. We all then followed Greg to the bathroom, unlocking not only the shortcut, but the mall worker trophy. Now that we're all back safe, Brad had come in clutch with the supplies, and I changed into something a little more comfortable. It's now early hours of day two. Heading back out, I jump up here for a secret SMG. I'll be coming back for this a lot, and then go outside. The prisoners, have returned, like I said they would. But I brought my SMG, so I could easily deal with them. Then, off to the gun shop to stock up. Inside, I find my next psychopath. Cletus is super paranoid and is defending his shot. He blows this guy away, and as you can see, he's packing his shotgun. So, I've gotta be careful. 
I mostly have to damage him from a distance because if I jump over the counter to deal damage, he'll just freaking pick me up over his head like he's some kind of wrestler and throw me over. I did jump over quickly just to snag a sniper rifle. I then backed up a little bit, went outside the shop and just sniped him until he were dead. Now anytime I want guns, I can just come back here and grab whatever the hell I want. Honestly though, the sniper is pretty crap. So, shotguns all the way. I then got my butt back to the security room. I see on the cameras that Carlito is pulling away Dr. Barnaby. You know, the old guy from the shop. Yeah, Brad sets off and I follow closely behind. At the entrance, Carlito is holding a position with a sniper and has hung Dr. Barnaby up. I guess I'm taking him out again. I head towards his location and for whatever reason, decide now is a great time to try on some new clothes. Fortunately though, it wasn't for nothing. Not only did I look pretty freaking cool, I tried on five different costumes becoming a sharp dresser. Catching up with Carlito, his attacks are really easy to be honest. At a distance he obviously snipes me, but up close all he really does is hit me with his gun and then run away throwing grenades. So I just smacked him a few times with a mini chainsaw. Now that it broke, I won't be getting any more. I then finished him off with my huge axe. How he survives that, I couldn't tell you. But speaking of breaking weapons, every weapon has a durability. You can see it in the top right there, that blue line. Yeah, once that completely depletes, the weapon's destroyed. Luckily, I'm in a mall full of things to use. And as you saw earlier, I used a bowling ball. I can use almost anything that's just lying around, just like that TV at the beginning. Or even something useless like a freaking toy sword or some teddies. You know, up to you, go nuts. Just don't bring toys to a psychopath fight because it probably won't go very well. After the fight, Carlito once again escapes. Brad has been shot and is injured. Thankfully, I did manage to get Barnaby, who is now out cold. So both me and Brad get back to the security room with Barnaby and Brad rests his injury. I then head back into the mall and to a supermarket for some medicine. I arrive and run into this guy. This is Steven and he's uh, gone mad. Who'd have thought? People have tried to come in and take his food and he weren't having none of it, including this lady from before. Within seconds, Steven snaps and we're in a fight. This fight honestly is actually really easy. Since we're in a supermarket, it's completely full of food infinite food so i have unlimited heals making this fight ridiculously easy i came prepared though as well you remember those shotguns yep i got those shotguns from the gun shop earlier and i used those against him he's got a cart full of items sharp items i might add that'll run me over with luckily it's really easy to avoid and if i climb on top of the shelves he'll use his shotgun to shoot me I just simply popped in and out of the different shelves, just taking pot shots at him with a shotgun. Who will run my store when I'm gone? <laughs> my store? My food? My sales? My... Customers. Customers. Have a nice day. Clean up! Register six! After the fight, I wake up the woman in white and suggest we work together. She's not interested and shouts that I started all of this by ruining Santa Cabeza and I'm like, Bro, what are you talking about? First of all, I didn't start this. Second, who, why, where is Santa Cabeza? Anyway, she runs off and I take a photo of the psycho. Morbid, I know, but it turns out this was my fourth one I'd photoed. Unlocking psycho photo. I quickly dash into the pharmacy, grab the first aid and head back to the security room. On the way, I help a couple and some sisters. I give Jesse the first aid Brad's gonna be all right, be thankfully. Fine. Dr. Barnaby also wakes up and overhears us mentioning Santa Cabeza. It seems he knows a little more than he's letting on. 
I tried to document the whole thing, but they ended up closing the door on me. Rude. So I instead tried to track down the woman, because maybe she'll give me some information that they want. So back to the mall I go. I save this dude who somehow has eaten everything in your sandwiches. Like, bro, what the hell? How? Anyway, he's still hungry. What? So I give him a pie. And then I bring him along. Don't know how far he'll get without food, but I guess we'll find out. Otis then tells me on the radio that something weird is going on at the hardware store. Once I arrive, I am confronted by a dude called Cliff. He's a vet who's lost his marbles and thinks everyone is a mole. Or Viet Cong if you play in the original. And as you can see, you don't want to be on the wrong side of this fella. His attacks are pretty easy to dodge at least. He's got a machete, which is a freaking cool ass weapon. So for this fight, I simply hit him, dodge and repeat. I also use my SMG, having shot a total of 300 bullets, which gets me bullet point. After doing a little damage, he'll also run away and then jump down this hole, reappearing somewhere up high, throwing dynamite. I also managed to snap a picture of him as he was jumping down for some bonus PP. A few shots later, and a swift hit from my katana did the job. Poor Cliff lost his family to the zombies. He watched as his daughter was eaten alive, and that was enough to send him over the edge. That would drive any dad crazy. While dying, he realizes he's definitely done wrong, and he gives me a key to save a few survivors that he'd locked up just outside the shop. I unlock the door, they all shit the bed, but I tell them it's fine, I'm here to save them. But first, I want to take a picture of everyone, which also turned out to be my 30th survivor. I then grabbed a book that was on the ground, this would double my heals. So instead of healing two of those little blue squares that you see in the top left, it'd heal four. The game has got many of these kinds of books, and they all have different effects. As I mentioned earlier, for example, do you remember when I said about the chainsaws that you get from Adam? Well, you can hit 80 times with that weapon before it breaks, which honestly isn't that much. But there's three different books you can find that improve the durability by three times, and they all stack. Basically meaning with all three books that three times on top of three times, that 80 hit chainsaw is now 2160 hits. And that is what I meant by you could easily get those books and use the chainsaw and easily defeat any psychopath or enemy in the game. Not to mention if it did break, you could just simply go back to where you defeated Adam and pick up another chainsaw. So now that I've chewed all of your ears off and probably confused you, I'm sorry. I saved those survivors and headed back to safety. You're going to end up like butcher meat if you don't move your ass, mate. Over. Well, the AI so far have definitely like the survivor AI is 100% better, but it's still, uh, this, they still have the moments. I was introduced to a cult wearing yellow raincoats. Just as they was about to make a sacrifice, the leader noticed me. Brilliant. They all turn around in the creepiest way possible and stand around doing this weird, like, pose thing. I don't know what that is, but yeah, they do their thing. And as long as I don't go too close, they actually mostly leave me alone. But I wanted to save the woman in the box, so I ran over there, went to town on everyone with a katana, and saved her. Now back safe, I watched on the cameras as the girl from earlier rode a bike back to that supermarket. Wasting no time, I set off, and while making my way over there, I took out a few more yellow raincoat members. 100 to be exact, for the no thank you trophy. Keep that cult to yourself. I also found these two poor sods hanging from a giant bunny, which was pretty hilarious, not gonna lie, so I snapped a picture. I stumbled into something I don't think I was supposed to see. This police officer, who clearly didn't like slim women, or maybe she's just playing dress up, who knows, I don't know. Either way, she wasn't happy about my arrival and just straight up attacked me. Nice. She's pretty dumb though, to be honest. She just ran around the shop chasing me as I kind of like ran in circles around the little thing in the middle, keeping my distance and then just spraying her with my SMG. 
She did take a lot of bullets, but once she was down, I untied all of the survivors and continued on until I came across three snipers who were using humans as target practice, since, you know, zombies are pretty slow and they're an easy target. That said, it's another easy fight. Just get in close, and if the sniper laser's pointed at you for, like, a few seconds, just simply roll to avoid the shot. Also, what's pretty funny is the dad runs super slow, because he's old, and one of them, the derpy one, he just, like, trips up all the time. I kind of felt bad about killing him, to be honest. Anyway, them done. I took the survivors back and finally headed to the supermarket. I saw her trying to leave on a bike until she decided it was a good idea to try and run me over. Like, bro, what? Does everybody just hate Frank or something? Man's just trying to get a story. Anyway, she's a horrible driver. She crashed a lot and I quickly donated a few SMG and shotgun bullets to her. She fell off the bike and was willing to talk. Seems everyone in the small town of Willamette talks after a few shotgun rounds, not before. She tells me to talk with Carlito because he has all the answers, but she won't take me to him right now because he's injured. Yeah, I kind of did that anyway. She said once he's good, she'll bring him to me and then he'll give me all the answers I need. We also find out the brother and sister. Who'd have thought? But it does mean he'll probably listen to her. While I waited, I saved a few more people and see this zombie. What is that? That zombie's like phasing between universes or something. Back at the security room, I have a little chat with the group and Barnaby seems to think the zombies were caused by a dodgy drug. All right. But how and why is what we need to find out. Before that though, Ronald is getting fucking hungry again. Bro, what? And if you don't bring him some food, he's going to leave and take everyone in the room with him. What a tit. Honestly, this guy is a giant pain in my ass. Thankfully, I had some orange juice on me and he seemed pretty happy with it. Food, food, food. I love food. Perfect. Crisis averted. So while I waited for that interview with Carlito, I reunited these two snapped a sweet picture that was worth over 10,000 pp for the artiste. I also photographed my 10th pp sticker. Only 90 more to go. <laughs> and it was now finally time to go and meet this Carlito. While waiting for Biker Girl, she comes flying through the doors being attacked by a zombie. I quickly kill the zombie and she tells me she tried to talk to Carlito, but he had none of it. Ended up shooting her and according to her, he started the outbreak. He talks over the mall's radio, saying he's sorry. I quickly get her back to the security room before she bleeds out. I'm now on day three. Biker girl is sleeping, and I head out towards movie land to deal with that insane cult leader geezer that we saw before. Oh. Alright, fellas. I'll, uh, leave you to it. Okay, never mind. I find him doing cult things, because, I mean, oh, that's what they do. I try. <laughs> <laughs> He's tied up some non-believers and starts to attack me with a sword. So, I use my trusty combo of the SMG and shotgun until he meets a pretty gruesome end. With all the survivors untied, I head back and find Biker Girl is awake and Brad is having a little chat with her. I finally get a name. Her name is Isabella. She then tells us there's no drug trade and that's just a cover up because the US are doing tests on wasps in Santa Cabeza and you want to know who the head of that research facility was? Yeah, it's our good friend Dr. Barnaby who moments later comes smashing through the bloody door attacking Jesse. Barnaby confirms it's true. They were trying to use the wasps to mass produce livestock because Americans eat too much meat. And then within a few seconds, he turns. Isabella tells us the infection got out the lab and turned everyone in Santa Cabeza into zombies. Brad then quickly drops zombie Barnaby. See you later, bro. At least I don't have to get poked in the eye anymore. 
and then head back to the gun shop because I wanted to restock all my stuff. And once I get there, I find a group inside. They shoot at me as I enter, but then they realize I'm not a zombie. I tell them the helicopter is coming tomorrow and I know a safe place. They don't believe me since they tried the security room door and it was locked. If you remember, Otis locked that right at the beginning of the game. But I then tell them that we've been using the vents to get in and out. They, again, don't believe me, but luckily, I've got a picture as proof. So, they end up coming along. In Wonderlands Plaza, I hear a guy with long hair shouting. He runs, throwing Molotovs behind him. I chased him, hitting him in the back when I got close, which quickly defeated him, making him my 10th psychopath for the Punisher trophy. He then trips like an absolute idiot and sets his balls on fire. I snap a quick pick for the PP and then grab a fire extinguisher, putting him out. This is my first psychopath that I can actually save. I get them all back safe and I use a B on a group of zombies, killing my 1000th zombie for Zombie Hunter. Tested out some of my new moves, answered my 30th call from Otis for the Transmissionary Trophy. If you know about this trophy, you know in the original it was incredibly stressful and in this version it has been made super easy. Which honestly, I'm not mad about. Anyway, back at the security room. Isabella tells us that Carly is planning on blowing up the mall with explosions so big that they'll take out the whole freaking town and spread the zombie infection outside of Willamette. Charming fella this Carlito. So it's now a race against time. I need to get my ass over to the maintenance tunnels and grab those bombs. Just outside the tunnels, I see a bike parked up. So I jump on it, I head into the tunnels, and this place is absolutely swarming with zombies. We will be back here in the future. But for now, I've got to be careful. I find the first of five bombs and switch my bike for something a little bit safer. Seems Carlito is also down here trying to stop me. While driving, I'd squished 500 zombies in a vehicle for road rage. I then grabbed my final bomb, popped them in a car, and got them out of the gas-filled tunnels. Or the gas-filled vans, I guess. Anyway, Brad and Carlito are having a shootout again, and both end up hitting the mark. After a little scrap, Carlito comes out on top and kicks Brad into the maintenance tunnels. It is not looking good for our main man Brad. Back outside, the bombs go off and we're okay. For now. After seeing that, I decide to head back into the tunnels and look for Brad. I can't leave the guy behind. I find his light and then hear him in the distance. Yep, Brad has definitely seen better days. He's been shot a few times, but this time... It's not looking good. With my man's guts hanging out, there's no hope for him. I get my trophy, and then I put him down. Perfect. Perfect. All right, let's put him out of his misery. I'm sorry, Brad. While heading back to the security room, I use this oversized umbrella and run through a few zombies to get the reigning zombies trophy. And then Isabella tells us that Carlito has a secret hideout. What the hell, Carlito? How much stuff have you got hidden, my guy? But she'll take us to it. We find it and try to get into his laptop for info. But we're having no luck. She doesn't know the password. I then get a call from Jessie saying she's found something fishy on the cameras. And I need to come back and check it out. Once I get back, I check the cameras and I see a pretty big fella dragging Carlito into a butcher shop in the tunnels. Seems I'm going to have to get my running shoes on and get back down into those tunnels. I arrive just in time. Carlito has been hung up. It seems like now he's hanging instead of uh, Barnaby. Okay. And about to be turned into a Carlito burger. While Carlito is slowly being moved towards the grinder, I go to town on Larry the Butcher with my katana. I think I'm more a butcher than he is. He also tries to throw like this huge meat at me like bro what but I did dodge it. So Carlito is clearly dying. I tell him Isabella is safe 
And then he goes on about how he wanted revenge for his people. Honestly, I can kind of see where he's coming from. I definitely wouldn't have done what he did, but, you know, he's, he's got motives. And all of this is because America wanted to eat more meat. Kind of ironic how it's produced zombies that only eat human meat. Anyway, just before he dies, he gives me a locket that he wants me to give to Isabella. And just before that, I got a request from a survivor back at the security room. Yep, she uh, she wanted me to take some sexy photos, so I did. All of the other survivors awkwardly looked at us as I took them, but, you know, I got some extra PP, so I'm not complaining. With all that done, I headed back to Carlito's hideout and had some fun walking on zombies' heads, unlocking the zombie road trophy. Now back at Carlito's hideout, I tell Isabella Carlito is dead, and unfortunately, I still have no password. I give her the locket though, and she has a eureka moment. She gets a good idea of what the password is, and she is correct. We are now in the laptop, and we have the facts. So, it's almost time to escape. Jesse finally gets through to the headquarters and tells them what's going on. And moments later, Jesse calls me back and tells me that they aren't coming to pick us up, and instead are coming to completely eradicate everything in the town. Within a few hours, the army have arrived, and they tell Jesse if she keeps her mouth shut, they'll let her go free. Minutes later, she completely turns into a zombie. How? I don't know yet. On my way back, I reach the roof and I hear the army taking out all of the zombies. Back in the security room, I find Jesse and then have to deal with her for another trophy. I'm sorry, Jesse. I'm so sorry. The army are now in full force, killing everything in sight. And I am now nearing the end. I checked my survivor list. I needed to save 50 for the trophy I mentioned. And I realize I'm going to finish the game with 49. I somehow missed two survivors. One of them I knew about, but the other I completely forgot. But let's push that aside for now. I still have soldiers to deal with. For two of the trophies, I had to defeat 10 of them and also defeat 30 with my bare hands. This trophy turned out to be the most difficult trophy in the whole game so far. They can easily melt you with the guns and then just tie you up and throw you in a chopper, wasting precious time. If I'm in the chopper and I'm trying to escape and they notice me, they'll knock me out and every time they do that, I lose hours and hours. So essentially, if I mess up too much, I might miss that window for me to get out of here. I escape from the chopper and then after a little bit of struggling, I finally got the legendary soldier for 10 and karate champion for beating the crap out of 30. I then found a rocket launcher, which honestly really surprised me because this was never in the original. And then I used it on the chopper outside to unlock helicopter. And then a few seconds later, I found all these zombies at the door and used my final shot from the rocket launcher, breaking it, which was my 30th item for item smasher. I defeated many more soldiers, this time with weapons, so, you know, it's a little bit easier, and find myself a few more rocket launchers. I went down into the maintenance tunnel, popped off a couple of rockets, killing 100 zombies with them for Rampage. And then shortly after that, Marathon Runner for covering a distance of 26 miles. At this point, the army had killed almost every single zombie in the mall, and I'm waiting on the roof for my guy to come and pick me up, or pick all of us up. He landed on another roof to see if he could see me before landing. He notices me and then comes over. Unfortunately, when he landed, while he was, you know, just checking out if I was there, a zombie must have got into the chopper, and then it takes a nice big bite out of him, causing him to crash. That's my escape done for. I kneel over and admit defeat. A few stray zombies slowly walk towards me, and the game ends. I then got three sweet trophies. Three day survivor for lasting 72 hours, Humanist for saving over 10 survivors in overtime mode for completing all the case files, being at the helipad on time and uncovering the truth. Turns out, 
it's not actually the end. Isabella comes running to the roof, saving me from the zombies, and somehow getting me to Carlito's hideout. Another thing, I'm infected, just like Jesse and Barnaby was. That's how those two changed without being bitten. I had one more day though to live before I'd become one myself. I'm now in overtime mode. It seems like all is lost and it's over, but that's until Isabella comes up with a great idea. Get some of these things and a few queens. That way she can make something that could possibly slow down the infection. I've got nothing else to do, so let's go and get these items. Unfortunately though, it won't be as easy as it sounds. Sure, all the zombies are dead, but I still have to deal with the soldiers. So I run around the mall like a freaking headless chicken, grabbing all kinds of weird shit. Isabella knows all this, thanks to the information on Carlito's laptop. He's been developing this thing on the side. Unfortunately though, we've got no idea how long it'll actually last. It could be a couple of days, it could be a year. To make things even worse though, 50 doses had already been made by Carlito and he'd injected 50 orphans and they were all scattered around America and they could turn at any time. So things go from bad to worse. The power goes out and I need to get over to the clock tower in the middle of the park to get it back up and running. My escape chopper has crashed into it, knocking out the power and making a huge hole where thousands of zombies are coming from. With the power restored though, I head back to Isabella with the queens and get my injection. But now, I'm good. But while thinking about what we could do to actually get out of here, she tells us she can try and create something that smells so bad to the zombies that they'll leave us alone. I then remember the hole in the clock tower. If zombies are pouring back into the mall through that hole, it must lead to somewhere. It's the only idea I've got. So we take our chances and we head inside the tower. This place somehow has even more zombies than the maintenance tunnels. The plan works though, and we run through thousands of zombies, hoping the smell doesn't run out. I swing a zombie for fun, and we reach the end and find two soldiers in a jeep. I quickly take out the two soldiers and steal the vehicle. I guess we now know where the prisoners got theirs. I then come face to face with a tank. Somehow survive the tank in the jeep, which makes no sense. So I blasted it with the gunner and force out the general. He was also the one who did the cleanup for Santa Capesa, and he intends on finishing the mission. So it's time for a good old fist fight. I'd already beat up 30 of his soldiers, so what's one more? <laughs> Swing him round. Oh wow, I got 5,000 XP bonus for that as well. That's cool. You ain't grabbing me, fella. Oh, the bowel grab. After beating him, he falls into the zombies. The camera pans above, and my first playthrough of Dead Rising comes to an end. Frank West managed to escape the town of Willamette with information pertinent to the incident under his belt. The news caused a fervor throughout the world, leading the US government to admit at least partial culpability in the livestock research program. However, no connection to the Willamette incident was acknowledged, and the events that occurred there were deemed the work of a fringe terrorist group. The people of the world, as could be expected from modern culture of news saturation, soon let the Willamette incident fade from their minds. The authenticity of Carlito's chilling plan to utilize orphans as his pawns has yet to be confirmed or proven false. And yet he complained that his belly was not full. I then got the infinite mode trophy. That's a mode I'll be playing very soon. And I cried a little inside knowing I saved 49 survivors. But not for too long. I wanted to get right back in and start my second playthrough. I carried over all of my stats, levels, and in this version, even my zombie kill count, which got me the never give up trophy. 
and then began working on killing 53,594 zombies. For a trophy, and also the most powerful weapon in the game, the real Mega Buster. Getting this many kills normally would take forever. So, I got myself a car and went into the maintenance tunnels, mowing down thousands of zombies in just a few minutes, quickly reaching the max level of 50. I then missed the trophy Zombie Killer for 10,000 zombie kills because at this point, I didn't actually know that the kills from your previous playthrough carry over into this one. My bad. That didn't happen in the original, so you know, it's not my fault. But how do I actually go about getting this many kills? Well, I'll take the red car in the parking lot down into the tunnels, killing zombies, at this point, until it starts to smoke. I want to get out before it blows up, because I don't want to get stuck down here. And once it does, I'll get this van, and then run over zombies in this area until it smokes. Once it does, I'll then return outside because it'll spawn a new vehicle. I'll grab the car again, do the same thing over and over and over again until I have 53,000 kills. This took about three hours, I would say, which honestly wasn't that bad. And although that was done, I wasn't finished with this playthrough. I got a bike from the car park and jumped 33 feet over this ramp for Stunt Rider. Grabbed a golf club and made a nice shot, sending the ball flying over 300 feet. Became a juice freak by making all mixed drinks in the blender. Changed into every costume in the mall. And while working towards the 100 PP stickers, this happened. What? and I then finished the playthrough. I now had the real Mega Buster for later. Moving into playthrough three, this was my 50 survivor playthrough. I dressed up as the nemesis and saved Bill, one of the two survivors I missed in my first playthrough. I then started Kent's questline, which would get me the final survivor. There you go, Kent, how's that for you? Pretty good, eh? 10,000 PP, it's a pretty big PP right there. Be here tomorrow at noon. Tomorrow we'll at noon, settle we'll settle it. Okay. Consider it done. But before that, I got tour guide for escorting eight survivors at once. And this was perfect timing because I'd been capturing those pictures, like I'd said, and I'd only needed two more PP stickers. For these two, I'd have to get captured by the cult. Come on, throw some, uh, I don't I really know what it is. They throw, that's the one. Yeah, so if they throw that and we don't regain footing, they're going to grab us. So now, I want to go from the Nemesis and wake up as Frank. And we are pretty much naked. They've took our clothes. They've took all my gear. And I need to find a way out. I need a passcode to open that. And the main reason we, we wanted to come in here is because the final two PP stickers are uh, in this room, so I'm going to take out all the cultists. Sorry fellas, I mean I'm not sorry to be honest. And then this should hopefully be the two final PP stickers that we need. We just got the passcode as well so we can get out. So we've got this one, that should be 99. And then this should hopefully be number 100. Yep, there it is, beautiful PP collector and we got the cool uh, hockey mask as well i then wanted to finish kent's quest line so i had to be in paradise plaza at 12 o'clock okay i got you tad are you all right oh he's t-posing all right so i should I've completed the notebook. Oh, you just go over to it. There we go. Full set. That's all of the survivors and the psychos in the notebook. I could then finish my final full playthrough with over 50 survivors. Hey, Fred. I told you I'd come back for you. 
It's Frank. Anyway, listen, we're gonna have more passengers than we agreed on. That's okay with you, right? Uh, yeah. You're paying for the extra fuel, I'll tell you that. Oh, okay, we're doing extra trips, is that what he was saying there? If we're paying for the fuel, I guess we're just doing multiple trips. Although Frank West was able to escape with some headline-grabbing stories, the cause of the zombie outbreak remains shrouded in mystery. The days following the incident are ushered in a series of similar zombie outbreaks in cities all across America. For a time, the city of Willamette would find its place in the spotlight remembered as the first city to fall to the zombie outbreak. Yep, there we go. Beautiful. Challenge completed. Saint, that's the trophy for saving 50 survivors. We saved 53. You love to see it. Next was my final trophy before moving into infinite mode. I had to escort eight female survivors at once. And the reason this is important is because obviously we've got Jennifer in the box, which will be our eighth and final... Uh, female survivor so as soon as we help her out we should hopefully pop the trophy so yep there it is the grateful eight and with that i could go and grab my final two trophies five day survivor and seven day survivor this mode involves quite a lot and although it's now much much easier than the original i'm still going to make a dedicated video for this mode just like i promised and it certainly had some pretty intense moments. Excuse me. No, 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 no. No. Oh my God. Oh my God. So go check that out. But here is the platinum pop and the end of my incredible journey through Willamette. Subscribe if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one. Boom. Five day survivor. Let's go. Oh, come on. Two minutes or three minutes. One minute. Give it to me. Woohoo! We done it. Seven day survivor. Again. And the platinum. Goodbye, Willamette.